You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And today we have a real special guest. We have the guy who just won the Battle of Five Lakes Tournament for the Northern Virginia Kayak Association, stop number four. Juan, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, uh, I have watched you know, some of your episodes and uh, doing great things for uh, fishing in, in our area and obviously for uh, NVKBA as well. Before we get into the tournament, really kind of take us back about your history in fishing and, and with the club. All right. So um, probably like most people, I've, I've been fishing my whole life since I was a kid. Uh, my dad was a love fishing myself and my two brothers um would fish as much as possible with him um it was mainly you know uh back then when we were kids it was catfish because uh it was easier to catch for kids i guess and, um, so we did a lot of catfishing panfish i didn't really get into bass fishing until my teens um and really started bass fishing when i was when I was in my early 20s when i was in the Marine Corps. so um, i had a good friend of mine james grayson that we can take trips down to Alabama where he was from and we just had a blast catching bass, you know, sort of really dialing in on different, you know, techniques and, and I fell in love with it. So ever since then I've been bass fishing So and also do some small water fishing as well, but um, oh, mainly cool. right now. Yeah. Where did you saltwater fishing? Well, I was stationed in Campbell June. So we were down there off, you know, uh, Onslow beach and uh, Moorhead city. So there's a lot of shore fishing, uh, intercoastal fishing. And oh, dear, that's fishing. awesome. I love it. Yeah. Fresh water. I mean, salt water is fantastic. And that's one nice thing about a kayak is you can take basically the same kayak and go back and forth. And um, there's so many saltwater opportunities around us. I mean, let's just say outside the DMV, the Carolinas are banging for kayak fishing, redfish, right. you know, tarpon, trout. Uh, and then you go into the Chesapeake Bay and the same thing. We have a thriving, you know, striped bass fishery. Then we also have the redfish and, and the speckled trout. So there's so many opportunities to kayak, not just fresh water. Right. Uh, my brother, uh, I have a twin brother, and he, he was living in uh, Virginia Beach for a few years. He's in the military as well. And, uh, and uh, yeah, down there in Virginia Beach, it's great kayak fishing down there. So uh, it's just, it's amazing. It's in, inshore with the reds and um, speckled trout, flounder. It's, yeah, it's great. So what got you into kayak fishing specifically and then like really into the kayak tournament scene? Well, for me, uh, it was a few years ago, um, a bunch of, you know, a few friends from work, we went down to Tampa Bay. It was actually the, the weekend that uh, Tampa Bay won the Super Bowl. Oh, cool. But uh, we went down there for a fishing uh, golf trip, and uh, I'm not really much of a golfer. I mean, I did golf a couple of days, but I was mainly going down there for the fishing. And I needed to get on the water, and I rented a fishing kayak. And, hmm. and uh, that was the first time I was actually on a – actually, I, I take that back. I did fish the Shenandoah one time. I rented a kayak in Shenandoah. Tampa Bay was really the first time I was actually geared and set up to fish on the kayak, uh, on, a, on a kayak that was meant for fishing. So, um, and I loved it, you know, I think it was great because I was able to get out to, to places where I wanted to go and um, we got on some good fish down there. And, and uh, after that, I started looking into uh, kayak fishing. And then from there, how did you get involved with NVKBA? Well, when I, you know, back here in Virginia, I started looking around, you know, I had already fished plenty of places around here, and I, and I started looking at the places I was fishing. I'm like, wow, if I had a kayak, I could go even further. I can go here. I can, I can hit these spots. I can spend more time on the water, you know, cover more water. And um, uh, I have a buddy of mine that owns a kayak business, uh, a recreational business. And, uh, so I talked to him, you know, because I, I pulled up kayaks. I, I was looking at Old Town, and when I, on the internet, when I put in Old Town kayaks, his company came up, you know, so I went, I didn't know you sold um, <laughs> kayaks for old times. Like, no, nah, it's just my rep, you know? So, um, but I went through him, you know, and so talking to him about the kayak, we had a bunch of different ones. And um, I bought the 106 MK Sportsman kayak by Old Town. For me, it was the perfect kayak. I did a lot of research on all different kinds, not only Old Town, but, you know, Bonafide. I looked at a different brands and um, for me, the old town 106 MK was perfect. And it is, it's, it's a phenomenal kick, uh, phenomenal kayak for uh, for fishing and it's done me well. So 
Um, and once I got that that kayak, I started hitting all the places I, I, I fish around here. And it just, I mean, it's a game changer. It really puts you on, you know, places you can't really go without a kayak or a, or a boat of some sort. Um, for, for the people that aren't completely embedded in the kayak scene, explain that kayak a little bit more. Does that thing, is that just a pedal kayak? Is it a paddle? Does it come with a, did you put a torpedo or electric motor on it? Um, mine, it has a, it has a, a Minn Kota motor on it. It's, 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 it's part of the kayak. Um, and I can take it out and put a, it comes with a plate that you can put in for like you on the river and you don't want to have a motor with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not be great. <laughs> no, but I mean, actually, uh, I did fish the, um, the bronze bat challenge and I actually, I did have my motor on it. Really? Because I, I can push it up and it, and it, uh, and it locks in the up position. So if I was going through some rapids or something like that, I could keep it up or and keep it from hitting rocks. And I actually did really well. I had planned not to use it, but then when I went through my pre-fishing, I was like, nah, actually I can probably use my motor on this one. You know? And and what it did for me was it was able, I can use that motor to pull me in positions where I was fishing for you know certain poles and certain uh, uh, spots that I knew that would be holding the small mouth. And, and it did, it, it did really good for me. So. But for my kayak, it's uh, it has a motor. Um, and obviously, I can still paddle with it. Um, what I like about it that I can control my rudder with my feet, mm. so I can throttle a little bit on my on my motor and and control my boat with my feet as I'm fishing. So for me, that that was a, a big seller for me, and, it, and it's done really well for me. So um, yeah, so I mean. I was looking at kayaks. I was looking at all of them. I was looking at pedal drive when I was in Tampa Bay with the pedal drive, and I, and I did like it. I think if you could get in, and I think some people that really do a lot of competitions, they have the pedal option and the motor, so they can motor to their spots, and then they can pretty much pedal the rest of the time. You know, as they're fine tuning or taking apart their locations, that's probably the best uh, um, option I think because you get the best of both worlds. But for me, the, the the boat I was looking at, it was perfect. So I just went with the the old town. Uh, one of six for your season going into the first competition like what, what how is your mindset this is you, you finished your first year you got to kind of like get the jitters out of the system and you now you're approaching it year two well for me it's, it's actually a great question because uh, my first year I, I had no idea you know how the terms will go you know for me and stuff like that and you get kind of nervous because i mean you look at the you know you know the the number of anglers are coming into the tournament and, and the level of experience. I mean, you'll be fishing with guys that are party pro, semi pro, have sponsors, you know, to guys that are just first time fishing on a kayak or first time fishing at all. So, um, what, what, what's nice about this club is that it really embraces all anglers of all all levels, you know. Mm-hmm. So, for me, that was that was important. It, it was really, I guess, uh. Uh, nice to see. It was a nice surprise to be able to go in and because you'll see on the on the Facebook chat, they'll say, "Hey, I'm fishing here. You might want to fish." And yeah, I'll fish with you, or or you know, this is first time fishing, you know, uh, you know, crankbaits. You know, you even have any uh, recommendations on what, how to start? And people just chime in on comments and, and really guide you to in the right direction. So, so that 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 kind of helps. You know, when you first start, because you don't know what to expect when you first time. And then you go, you know, you hope for the best. You'll be catch a fish, you know, and maybe catch five. But for me, um, the first tournament I fished was the, the Potomac last year. And it, it was a comfort, you know, body water for me. I fished the Potomac a lot. And um, I had my spots. I had my, uh, you know, I understood the tides. So for me, it wasn't a big deal. And, um, but the problem was with, with uh, kayak tournaments, you know, with the whole uh, CPR, you know, with measuring the fish and stuff like that. And I'm getting a couple of fish disqualified um, just because of hand placement or, or get some of the pictures. So, and it didn't really, you know, upset me or anything like that. I mean, to me, it was obviously just a learning curve for me. I, you know, that was, you know, my first year. It's good, good to get through that, you know, understand the, the process. So I just embraced it and, and learned from it. And, and the next tournament was better than the last one. So, but that kind of gets into, and, I, and that was last year, correct? So now we're going to pivot. Correct. Last year, yeah. Yeah. And now we're pivoting into this year where you, you do, and I feel it's like, yeah. Everyone wants to try to make a run at, at Rookie of the Year and stuff, which which is great. But I think a lot of times your first three or four kayak tournaments, you just or, or any tournament that matter, whatever sport it is, you can't really count the stats or how you perform because it's just getting into the rhythm, getting the confidence, and getting the yips out of your system. Like, right. I, 
whether you're a pro athlete or you're just starting out. Right. And the thing is, I mean, you can be a really good fisherman and I mean, you really have a lot of confidence, you know, and even in places you fished for 10 years, go fishing on a kayak and, and have certain things you have to do with a kayak and, and, and registering the fish. It's different, you know, it changes the way you cast, you know, the way you use certain baits. I mean, it's on the kayak, it's different than standing on a bass boat. Oh my God. On, yes. On like, yeah. So it makes it, you don't really realize that until you're on the kayak and you're like, or you go for your cast and you start wrapping on the, the four of the you know, rods behind you, you know, and, and the net, you know, I mean, it's just all, it's a learning curve, but it's a good, you know, for me, I love all aspects of fishing. So that whole learning process fascinates me you know, to be on a kayak, a totally different element of fishing and learn from it and get better at it. It just, it just, it motivates me. So I, I enjoy it. Um, I will say that, you know, with the kayak tournaments, um, it's it's addicting. I mean, you you know you, you get to a point where you're like, wow, I can do this, and I can you know, next tournament goes a little bit better, and just you know just keep adding to it. So um, this year for me, and I've told my wife every time I go on these tournaments, I said my goal is catch a fish. Mm-hmm. If I catch that one that's twelve inches or bigger, catch four more, and then once you have your limit, you can start building and getting up the up on the leaderboard. And that's been my philosophy ever since the first tournament. You know, catch a fish. Get on them, get four more, and then start picking away at the leaderboard. So, and, and just to kind of add a note there, what, what's so cool about Northern Virginia Kayak and in, in other organizations like it, you don't have to go crazy far. And I know they'd be like, "But you're, you have like Ann on the schedule of the Potomac." Yeah, but you also have the River Tournament, uh, the Bronzeback Challenge. You have the Battle of Five Lakes Part One, Part Two, and it gives people the ability that live in Northern Virginia or Western Loud and things like that. You can fish lakes that are in your wheelhouse. You know, I don't have 10 to 30 years of experience at Lake Anna because I don't live on it, but Sleeters and a couple lakes around there. Okay. I have a chance now or, or the Shenandoah. And I think that's just so interesting that it, it helps level the playing field at all that maybe you don't live on the title Potomac or Lake Anna. This schedule is built to where it kind of levels the playing field where you'll have one tournament that you should shine in. And then you got to just kind of have be that right. well-rounded angler. And my last point is the BFLs, you're spending 350 I think, just to get in the Derby. And you got to pay for gas for your boat right. and your truck and your hotel. MVKBA, you went over a thousand bucks and you're not breaking a hundred on your entry fee. And you don't have to spend anything on gas for your kayak, so to speak. You know. So it's a great, great concept and organization. Yeah, I like I like the way they set up the trail because, like you said, you know, um, there's a place for you along the trail. Um, yeah. For me, also, I like that. Like for example, the first one was Lake Anna. I've never fished Lake Anna maybe once before uh, on my buddy's pontoon boat. And then when you're in the kayak, that lake just makes you feel really, really small. You know, I remember going out there and I pre-fished, and I'm like, okay, well, what I have planned in my mind to fish is not going to be possible. So I have to narrow it down to a you know smaller, you know goal or, or smaller uh, place to fish. But at the same time, I mean I enjoy that. I enjoy being forced to fish in a place that I'm uncomfortable with and learning and, and good, bad, or ugly. You know, you get something out of it at the end. You know, and Lake Anna. I mean, I think I came in 12th out of 85. That was my first tournament this year. And I was like, wow, it's, I wasn't expecting that. But um, when I went, you know, and found my section, I was able to thrown in on the fish that were there and and ended up being for me you know a win so um, so i really do enjoy the way they set up the the trail with you know different yeah you have your, your places where oh i can definitely fish that and i should you know do fairly well to i'll attempt that and hopefully i can figure it out and, and get something out of it you know? so yeah that's just pretty pretty uh rewarding on, on how many different ways you can fish it so you got like anna which was interesting because last year at the Potomac first, so you got like Anna, you get, you get a top, top 15, you got a 12th place finish. Great way to start the year. Good confidence, but we're going into the Patamock and there will be about 600 kayak tournaments the same day, about three or four boat derbies going out the same time. Right. Uh, I don't know something about fishing a kayak tournament on the Potomac scares me a little bit just because it's just the boat traffic and that's big water. That's big, big water. Right. What, how did that tournament go for you? I guess, chapter two because you were you were on it last year and this is your second time being able to see it in a tournament format right well actually um so you're talking about the potomac correct yeah yeah i, I didn't fish uh 
the Potomac this year because of work. I wasn't I wasn't able to make that, but I did fish last year Potomac, which was the same thing at uh, KB uh, KB Upload and, and everything. So, um, and at the places I fish on the Potomac, I'm pretty confident. You know, no matter what what where the tide's at, high tide, low tide, flat. It, to me, I, I got I, I do fairly well on the Potomac. I'm not saying I'm going to win the tournament, mm -hmm. but I should be able to find fish at least flat in it. You know, so um, last year. I did find fish, but like I said, I got a couple disqualified because of, of, of uh, the CPR and uh, it was just a learning, learning uh, curve for me. But um, what I do know about that, that Potomac tournament is that, yeah, you don't know who's going to show up at your spots. You know what I mean? There's so many people on the water. Um, obviously, you know, some of the places that you decide that you want to go to, there's 10, 15 other anglers are going to do the same thing. So. So for me, that's one of my, um, if I struggle with something is, is, is how am I going to deal with, you know, going to a spot and there's already four people there. I mean, how do you fit into that? You yeah. Know, so. it, 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 it's definitely an interesting thing that I need to learn and get educated on as a kayak angler, um, as a new kayak angler, but you're going to have your opportunity later on in the schedule. If that's something, I mean, if you win, if you win the next one, I mean, you probably need to finish the rest of them because I, I believe. <laughs> I could be mistaken, but they drop your lowest finish, correct? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, but I think I think you're right. Because if that's... I see you're right. Yeah, he said that in the beginning, but yeah, they'll, they'll drop okay. the lowest. Because yeah. you got a twelfth and a first, but we'll get to that. So, yeah, dude, that's you're still there. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, but like, for me, like this year, for me, that's still I'm I'm in the you know, the building learning phase. You know, I want to build build my foundation and then just start. So, I mean, I love fishing like everybody else that, that fishes these tournaments. And, and for me to go in there and do well on a couple of them, yeah, it's exciting. You know? so, um, well, and that gets us to the next one. You talk about building the foundation. Um, and you mentioned that you did use your trolling motor for this, which was the Bronze Backyack Challenge, that you got to go Shenandoah, Upper Potomac, Rappahannock, smallmouth only. Like, walk me through that. Well, for me, the... Um, I was only on the Shenandoah one time years back. I took my son when he was little and we did a little float, you know. So I love smallmouth fishing. It's probably my, if I could pick one, dude, it would be smallmouth probably. I love it. Um, but the Shenandoah, so I, I, you know, I, I love research and, and planning for, for fishing. So I could, and it drives my wife crazy sometimes because I can sit, you know, at my computer and look at things and, and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm figuring out where I'm going to fish tomorrow. Or, you know, next week. So for the Shenandoah was, you know, at, at, the, at the big river, I, I decided I was going to go with the Shenandoah. Um, I debated doing the Upper Potomac because I've been did wanting to learn how to fish the Upper Potomac as well. But for me, um, I decided the Shenandoah was going to be it. So I started looking at different sections and I pre-fished it twice. And I quickly realized I wasn't doing a float. I was going to do a, you know, launch and then come back to where I launched. So the first time I went, I went in and I went, you know, I was trying to go up, you know, up river, but the problem was that it, the water had been high, a little bit higher. So I was, I was struggling on some of the, the rapid uh, the parts that had ripples or the rapids. So I couldn't get my kayak over. I could, you know, skirt the, the shoreline and get over them. But to me, I was like, I don't know if it was going to be doable for me on tournament day. So I went down river and I found a, a pretty nice stretch, a good maybe two miles, mile and a half. And I found a different launch site that was lower. So the next time I went, I went to the lower one. So my train of thought was no matter what, I'll go up and I can always just float down to where I started. And I was able to find um, good fish, you know, and what's funny about, well, not funny, but what's great about fishing for smallmouth on the river is that like every day that river can be completely different. Mm -hmm. And like my first, Pre-fish day I went, that's like, well, I got these spots, you know, and, and then when I went to go to them again the next week, all gone, you know, so, so that kind of makes you, you know, have to think, you know, all right, well, and that's how I fish. I always have my plan A, B, C, and, and you sometimes even have a Hail Mary plan D, you know, so, um, so on tournament day for that day, I, I went with, you know, the, the second launch I found and went up and I, it was pretty good. I had, I had found some really good, uh, small mount main stem or were you on the north or south i was on the south the south okay yeah. yeah i guess you wouldn't have a trolling motor on the north though that would be kind of fun yeah. 
Yeah. How busy was it? Because there was a couple of people in the top 15, I think, that that did the forks, which, again, guys, if this is your first time listening to the episode, the Shenandoah 10 years ago went through a massive fish kill and no one would pick the Shenandoah. It'd probably be up for Potomac Rappahannock. And it's weird that this year it's like a lot of people in the top picked the Shenandoah, which is impressive. Yeah, um, I was surprised because, I mean, when I pre-fished the Shenandoah, it was during the weekday, so it was pretty empty. I mean, there was nobody really there. A couple, There was a John boat that came down and I think one other kayaker. So on tournament day, I thought, well, I'll probably have this whole section to myself. But I showed up and there's already four people there, you know. And three of them were from the tournament, you know, which was kind of cool. I love meeting uh, yeah. anglers that are, are facing the tournament because we get to you know, meet some of the guys and um, and uh, and I, I don't mind at all. And plus, it's the river. I mean, I don't think there's you know, plenty of room for everybody. And um, but yeah, so it was busy. They, but they all fished this one section, and, and I actually took my kayak past the first set of ripples, uh, uh, moved the water, and, and I was able to get above that, and I was by myself for a little bit. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and I had my spots already, you know, planned out where I was going to hit for the next few hours, and I was able to catch a limit. And yeah, it was a great day for me on the river, for, for what I wanted to get out of that day. So. I think it was Alex um, Folke who I had on, and he he said something that really stuck with me this year, which is like, if you're kayak tournament fishing, you just got to catch a limit every time. Just you got to come in with it. It's so important. Yeah, I agree. I agree with it. Yeah. Now you got confidence. That's a great experience. And so now we have, you've had fished two tournaments. The first one, you got a 12th place. This one, you caught a limit. Where did you finish in this one? 20th. 20th? Dude, solid. Yeah. Really solid. Yeah. So this is a lot of good karma, which is building into what's happening yeah. next. Yeah. And yet yeah, let's, this is the fun part. Let's get into it. So battle of the battle of five lakes, great title. We were going to pick Burke Lake, Frederick Sleeters, uh, Beaver Dam, and Aquan, but then Beaver Dam, that's a freaking nightmare. I'm, that's a whole yeah. other topic. I got to get some people in there to talk about that where they shut the lake down. So it became Georgetown. Um, how did the decision making before the tournament, because I think this is so freaking cool where you get to pick a couple of lakes. Yeah. Where was your decision making thought process before the tournament about where you were going to go? Well, I knew right away I was going to be fishing the, the res because. Uh... I fished it before. I know there's there's good bass there. I know um, you can win it there for sure okay. um, if you get on them. But um, and really, the only that's the only one I, I consider that was for me. If I was going to have a chance of doing well on it, it was going to be the res. Uh, I do enjoy Berk, uh, fishing Burke Lake because I've fished it so many times. But the problem this year, it, it, they had drained it uh, to do some repairs on the marina, and, and so the water had not come up, and I had not fished it at all this year. So. Burke Lake was out of the question. Sleeters, I've never been to, and I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it up there to fish it a couple times to, to figure it out. So that was going to be out of it. Uh, I knew uh, for the Beaver Dam or Beaver Creek, I knew that was out of play. So I was almost, I mean, I was going to fish the res no matter what, but it, it almost kind of challenged me to that's the only place I could really fish to be competitive. So it, it's the most logical place to win. For me, yeah. uh, I mean, yeah. even I just had. SB fishing on last week, and I think he just caught an eight pounder out of there two weekends ago. Like, yeah, that place is freaking loaded, dude. It's insane. It is, you know. And the only thing that I was worried about was the the John Boat tournament that they have there every weekend. So I quickly looked it up, and I realized that they, they do their tournaments on Sunday, but mm -hmm. we were good. So, um, so I said, you know what, I'm gonna do. It. And not only that, I uh, found, uh, found it, but the the Aquan Reservoir is pretty close to my house. Oh, so nice. I was pretty near to it, so. I was able to pre-fish it a couple times and figure out, you know, what, what I was going to do on the res. And what, you know. Would you then consider that like your your home body of water? Oh, uh, one of them, yeah, for sure. That and the Potomac River, for Potomac. sure, are, are normally where I fish. And I probably should have asked this earlier, but do you have electronics on your boat? Because I know at the res, like live scope and stuff like that, play pretty heavily. It's funny you say that because I, I do I do have electronics, but it's very basic. I have like a Garmin uh, Striker or something like that. It's a very small. It only gives me depth, you know, um, uh, minimal information. Um, but for me, that's all I need right now. Um, but the day of the competition, it it, it didn't work. I had electronical problems. Uh, oh my god! My wiring. Yeah. So luckily, I pre-fished, so I, I knew where I was going. I knew the where my depths were, the areas I was fishing. 
my my plan A for that day was going to be finesse fishing. I was going to go to five three, you know, be pick apart, you know, uh, lay down, you know, uh, rock walls, all that. You know, I'm just going to focus on that. So for me, it wasn't a big deal. But um, but yeah, I I, I do need to get better electronics. I, I want to now. So but well, now you can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> de- de- definitely got got something to put in the fund. So to make sure I understand that for everyone listening at home, going into it, you before the electronic funky thing, you were still planning on fishing shallow basically and not yeah, doing brush piles and things. Okay. Yeah, I fished the res twice for pre-fishing and um, I had picked a, a long, well, my area that I wanted to fish was going to be far from my launch. So my plan was to fish up to the point where I was going to go attack that for a couple of hours and then come back you know, fish up and down. Well, the first day I went up, I started fishing my way up to the spot that I was going to check out. And, um, it didn't, it was, it was too, too far. I mean, for me, it was, it didn't make, I mean, I was catching fish along the way, but, um, I couldn't, I couldn't get all the way. I couldn't finish my route that day. We only had a couple hours to fish. So my second day I went to pre-fish, I decided to do the opposite, go all the way to where I was going to end up and then fish back. And once I got to the point, my furthest point of my route, I realized, well, you know what? I can take this whole section and create my own little lake. Hmm. And then, and I don't have to worry about the res. You know, I'm not fishing the whole reservoir. I'm just fishing this little lake. You know? And with eight hours, I can, I can pick it apart. And, and that was, but I, that was, that was my plan for Smart. turning. Yeah. This is my, this is my little lake. And hopefully I'm by myself and I just pick it apart. Um, yes. And yeah, that was, that was the plan. And there's some fancy military quote that make me sound intelligent. If I, if I, uh, if I remembered it, something like best laid plans only work till they meet the enemy. So it, it's day one, you get there. Um, what was, so for me, it's leaders. There was about 600 boots in front of me to, at the park as we waited uh, to get in there. They were selling hot dogs and stuff while we waited. Was it packed or was it about what you thought it would be when you got there to the res in the morning? Um, well, for me, it was, no, it was, it was not what I was expecting at all. It was actually, my, my day started terrible. Um, um, I showed up at, I, I launched at um, well, uh, Lake, Lake Ridge boat ramp. It's over there in uh, Woodbridge. So it, it puts you on the opposite side of Bull Run okay. on the reservoir. So, or kind of like closer to the other side. Um, and I thought that more, more, more of the anglers were gonna fish Bull Run down that area at least what I was thinking from what I was hearing and stuff. So I knew that I was going to be on the opposite side. So that, that might be working for my advantage. But when I showed up to my ramp, it was the gate. And I'm sure some of the guys that, that watch this are going, to, are going to laugh about it. I show up and there's already 10 boats waiting to get in and the, and the gate to the ramp is closed. It's locked. That's so I'm like, I was not expecting that at insane. all. And by the time they showed up to open the gate, there's already like 15, maybe 18 of us waiting to get in. So our launch is already, you know, blown. And and I'm not going to be on my spots on lines in. I'm going to be there late. So the, the, my whole plan, beginning of my plan was already derailed. So I then, I had that epiphany too. While I'm waiting in line, it's like, why the hell do I plan shit out when 90% of the time <laughs> you have to start the day with a two minute warning drill? It, 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 it's so right. rare that it's like, I'm going to do this, this, and this perfectly. And by this point I have my limit and then I go to a kicker. It, it just, it doesn't always work that way. Right. Yeah. So I and mean, so now I'm, I'm, now I'm envisioning, you know, 15 of us going all the way up to the same place that we all want to fish, you know, and I'd talked to a couple of guys while we we're waiting at the gate. Um, one was, uh, Greg Oaks, um, first time I'm meeting him, really great guy. He was, uh, you know, kind of like, you know, saying his views on things, you know, and it was, it was, it was just a great conversation. And, and, uh, the way he was talking, I think I had a pretty good idea, a pretty good idea that I was probably going to see him again on the, on the water. And I did at the very end of, uh, I met up with him and we kind of, you know, motored back, um, after the tournament was over. Um, but to my surprise, when I got to my spot, and that's the thing. I was going to go straight to my spot, but now I'm late. People are already fishing. Uh, so I was like, you know what? There's a couple spots I know on the way there. I'm going to hit them and maybe I'll get lucky and get a, a one or two that's going to the water right away. And nothing. Everything I caught was less than 12 inches. 
Uh, but I did check the leader leaderboard and people are already on the, which I never do, but for some reason that morning, I'm like, hey, let me see how everybody's doing. And, and people are already racing up the board. And I'm like, oh, no, this is going to be an awful day. Um, but I made, it up to, I made it up to my spot and surprisingly, there's nobody there. I mean, there were a couple of local um, teenagers fishing. Um, and there was a boat that was out with a, it wasn't a bass boat, but it was a, a, a big boat that he was fishing. Other than that, I had it to myself. So um, I started picking up the park. When when does things start getting right for you? Well, the whole morning, I mean, like I said, it was, it was, it was you know, I lost my um, fish finder capability, late launch. I get to my spot. Luckily, nobody's really there. I go to one of my spots that I know that, I, that holds good fish. I've caught a couple times there, and I'm not going to get anything. So I didn't catch a, a fish that I could actually register on the boards until about, I would say, 1130. Oh, so, holy God, dude. Yeah, but I'm, and the thing is, I'm catching fish. I'm, I'm, close. Just, I'm not catching anything big, you know? So, and the only and the other thing I was worried about that spot that I was in was the snakeheads. Uh, the two days, the day before, or the not the day before, the day I pre fished, um, there was a lot of snakeheads up there. So, I like catching snakeheads. But just not on tournament day because you know if I catch one of those and start messing with my lines, you know I like part retie and, and uh, so I was hoping not to catch any of those. Um, I did end up catching one, but he shook off um, and didn't do any damage to my my stuff, so that was good. Um, Where was your head at? So by eleven o'clock, you don't have a keeper, you don't have a good one, and right. you had the voices, you have the devils on your shoulder telling you you should sell everything, go live as a hermit, you suck. Then you stick the first one. It, is it at that point that you start feeling like the wheels and the momentum's building, or was that not the fish that made you feel like I salvaged the day? Well, it, like I said, like around eleven thirty, probably when I when I caught the first one, and then and my day wasn't going as planned. Obviously, I, you know things weren't going great, but I was catching. I mean, I, it wasn't like I hadn't yeah. gotten the butt yet, you know. So, but what I was fishing had to change. I knew that, and and for me, I, I, I was already planned out so my plan a was not working so i went to plan b and plan b for me was uh crankings so um i stopped fishing the lay downs and you know the finesse fishing there was a lot of grass where i was at so i was like you know what i'm gonna fish the grass and and you know skirt the edges with my crankings you know and it's funny because um my son had gave me uh uh, three lures for father's day one of them was a crankbait so i tied that on Actually, you, you'll appreciate it because uh, I watched one of your uh, episodes on, on, I think when you were fishing, actually, I think you were fishing the Shamdilla, and you were talking about the Chartreuse uh, yeah. Black Pack. You know, it's a, this is it right here. Ooh. Yeah, it's funny because I told my son about it. He's like, yeah, this guy, you know, he this is one of his favorite lures. And actually, he likes it so much that if he can't find the color, he gets a, a Sharpie and paints <laughs> a back black. But um, so he gave me this, you know, and I tied it on. Um, it's just a simple square bill, uh, shallow crankbait and second cast, I hooked my first one, you know, and it hit pretty good. So I ended up being 16 and a quarter. So it, it put me on the board and, uh, I continued fishing with it and I caught another one, which was too small to, to register. So I was happy with the crankbait, but I, I decided I needed to switch it up to, to more of my comfort. And I, I went to a, it might surprise you, but I went to a lipless. Hmm. lipless what kind of vegetation are we are we talking about shoreline uh vegetation we're we talking about submergent uh vegetation so shoreline vegetation and I you're mean, using a lip lift. well i wasn't fishing i wasn't throwing in the vegetation oh. i was like I was throwing it like you know maybe two feet three feet away from it you know and, and the reason why and i know it's probably not what everybody would think but for me um it is one of my comfort baits that i fish is the lip lift you know, i fish it for, for a long time and it's heavy. It's a uh, actually I have it right here. It's a uh, a half ounce. Ooh, red. The red eye spray king uh, lipless. Is that a two tap, a silent, or the regular? Two tap. Two tap. And and for me, I mean, just the the vibration and the oh god, I love it. I mean, they they I, I in my mind, I could throw this super far down the shoreline, bring it back to me, burn it, and then just fan it out every every foot or so. And I was hoping that that would you know attract big bass and it did i mean i think i threw this twice on my second cast 
I know it's a 16 inch, you know, uh, dude, uh, fast. And then I just kept this on the rest of the day. What with that situation where it's not like submersion vegetation, let's say like a, a milfoil or hydrilla bed, but you're fishing standing vegetation, uh, bull rush, stuff like that. Are, are you yo-yoing it, dragging it across the bottom, slow rolling it? Like what is the cadence for that kind of situation? Well, I was switching it up. I mean, I started, you know, um, close and I, and I'll get hung up, you know, with the, with the square ball, I was able to get it, a little bit of the vegetation in it and I was able to rip it through a little bit and it was fine. And actually I caught one doing it that way. Um, but you know, with the trouble hooks and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's bound to get, you know, um, uh, snagged, but, uh, with the lipless, I like it because as soon as it hits the water, I can control where, where I want it to come back to me, you know, on the, on the, on the, in the water. You know, I can burn it really quick and it'll bring it bring up maybe closer to the to the surface or I like to let it hit to the ground and, and bounce it off. I couldn't really let it go down too deep because of the a couple times I did, it, it would get it would get hung up. Um, but it was working so well for me in that area that I just kept I just kept throwing it because I was able to cover so much water and that in my mind I was trying to catch up because I was running out of time and I ended up uh, getting my five on the board. You probably mentioned this, and I just completely spaced. But what was the water quality? Water quality. What was the water color like? Well, it, it was. I, I expected it to be super standout, so I was, you know, I was just gonna, you know, fish my finesse fishing, um, you know. But uh, further into the into the creek, creek, it was awful, you know. Um, I think that's where I caught that snakehead. But um, where I was fishing the crankbaits, it was, it was somewhat clear it wasn't like it wasn't clear like it was out in the main uh body of water but it was it was clear enough for me that i can i can i thought i could, I could do well with it dude i mean and, and this is the thing that's interesting is when when you do catch them late in the day is i guess it's anxiety to an extent i guess where you feel like you force yourself to fish fast did you ever feel like that was a not a problem but were you fighting that in your head like am i fishing too fast do i need to calm down and work an area more uh, for me at the, at that time, no, because I um, um, had caught you know you know by then I had caught two good ones, um, and I think I was, I was doing fairly well you know on the leaderboard. Uh, I think it was in the teens already, so I was like, wow, this is this is you know I could I could definitely catch up. And and with the lipless, I was able to cover so much water. I wasn't rushing, but I was able to cover more water, and then I was able to do the same route I did twice. You know, and it's actually. That boat that I was telling you earlier about, he was coming in and out. He was just going wherever he wanted, you know. And I'm I'm not one to really argue or, or get you know, you know, argument with another angler. I just like what I'm saying. There's there's plenty of place. I always avoid you know getting involved with another angler because they want to fish the same spot. He obviously was in a big boat and he wanted to go there and he was gonna go there no matter what. I'm just in a kayak, so and the way he was fishing, I I, I could see that he would just not taking his time. He was just throwing lines in and moving here, moving there. I just let him do his thing. And then once he left, I went in and caught two fish where he was fishing. You know? So, um, so I wasn't too, um, worried about, you know, I wasn't rushing where I, I was going to run out of time. I just knew I had to cover more water or else I'd probably be in that situation. Mm -hmm. So you did have, I think just the, the death nail. This was, you know, really running up the score here. When did this 18 incher actually cross the the, the the tunnel of your boat? It was actually uh, at right before the last hour. So, if I, when I'm, you know, obviously, you know, you would look back at, at your day and, and what you could have done better or what you would change anything. And, and when I was finishing up my area, that was my little lake that I, I called it. Um, uh, Greg actually showed up that time and he said, he told me there was a place that was far away at the gate that he was going to end up at. You know? And in my mind, I'm like, he's coming to my place. I know that because I just, I thought that he would. And he showed up, you know, and he was, I think he even catched two more, he said, or no, one more. He's, 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 he's trying to catch his last one for his five. And he was going to hang out in there, but he didn't like the water, you know, quality there. So he said, you know what, I'm going to go out and, and get in more clear water. So I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to fish up here and, and I'm going to probably head out too because I'm we're, we're pretty far from the launch. So I might have probably would have should have 
go ahead and recycle one more time through my spots just because uh, the, the bats were, were, were hitting pretty good um, with the, the crankbaits. But I decided to go to my Hail Mary spot because I hadn't seen it yet. You know, I've been thinking about it for the past two weeks. It's a spot I'm pretty sure nobody's going to be fishing. And uh, I said, you know what? I'm going to go out there and just check it out. And yeah, I caught my first fish up the ladder there was 17 inches. And the next cast was 18 inches. Dude, and that's at that point, uh, where was your mindset? Well, I was already happy, you know, because I was able to uh, salvage today. Um, I felt pretty good. You know, my, like I said, my, my goal is to catch a fish, then catch four, catch a limit, and do my best to get in the top ten. That, that's that's where I'm at, you know. I mean, do I want to be top five? Do I want to win? The, absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm not going to decide until it ends, you know. But for me, a win is top ten. That's, that's a good accomplishment. At, at right now, where I'm at with tournaments, you know, so. Um, but once I got to that last spot, I was like, I can definitely be top five on this, you know, or even, even take it. You know, I just got to get a, a one or two more, you know, good size bass, and I should be in good shape. So, and that's what happened. And, and the spot I was at, you know, the lip was able to get it to where I wanted to cast, and I was able to burn it the way I wanted to, and, you know, those two good ones. The thing is, like, so, like, with boating tournaments, if, if you know, on most lakes, if you know you got 20 pounds in the live well, you could be like, ooh, ooh, this might be fun at weigh-in. This might be enough. With, did you know you had about 80, 82 inches? And did you think, like, this is top 10? Or you're like, ah, I'm not going to even, like, get in the top 10 at all with, with this amount of length? Well, when I caught the 18 and a quarter, it was uh, my fifth one that I, that I was going to, you know, you know, make my limit so i checked the leaderboard and it had me at number one you know i didn't i didn't sit there and calculate you know who's who's where and what i was like wow that's awesome you know but i, I still have an hour to fish you know yep. so i knew i, I, I had to keep fishing and so, people uh, like to wait and not like punching everything yeah. in so yeah yeah and then uh but then I, I realized that i think i only had two and a half inches on the lead you know so that's not that's not good so um i tried my hardest to, i think my smallest fish was uh, 14 and a half inches. So I was trying hard to call that fish, at least get rid of that one and, and put in a 15 or 16 or, or better, you know? And, then, and I fished, I just couldn't catch a scene enough to knock it off, you know? So when it closed down, when it, when it was finally done, I had no idea. You know, I, in my mind, I was like, awesome, I'm number one, but I could very easily be number five, six, seven now, you know? Because some people wait till the end to put in their fish, you know? and who uh, actually was uh, uh, Michael Hogan was uh, number two, and that guy's he's gonna be on your show soon enough, I guarantee it. So um, did, did he fish? Uh, he fished the rest too, right? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure he did. I think he did. I'm not sure, but uh, but yeah, he, he could easily, you know. And he, he, I talked to him at the war ceremony. He came up to me, congratulated me because he knew that that I had won. That's how I found out. He, he told me. Try to get you. I needed two. I got one, but I, just, I wasn't good enough to get you know get the lead. So, but it's so awesome talking to him, you know, because he told me we kind of went back and forth, and and then we realized we're both we're, we're both firefighters. He works for Arlington, I work for Fairfax. Oh, cool. So, yeah, so it was really really neat to connect that way. And um, but yeah, that's 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 one great thing about it is when they shut it down, you don't you don't know, you know, and you and you're fishing fishing, and I'm super far, so I was like, oh, I can't see out here until the end because. By the time I get back, it's you know I wanted to make the award ceremony regardless of what happened. So, so I started fishing on the way back, and if I could go back and change, I probably stayed longer at my last spot, or maybe backtrack to my previous spot. But instead of trying to fish my way back, yeah. I think I might find another one or two. So, if if and nuts, like you know, you can always play Monday morning quarterback. But the decision that you did this day and, and the adjustments you did is what got you, you know, the top spot here. And, you know, I mean, congratulations again for, for, for winning the battle of five lakes, uh, part one, uh, we're going to title. Is this going to be a tournament that you're going to be able to, to, to fish? Um, I'm working on it. Um, I'm scheduled to work that day. So, and I, and I'm, you know, also scheduled to work the next day. So it might be tough for me. Um, I'm going to try and make it work, but right now with my job, I'm in a situation where, um, it's hard for me to take off right now just because I'm a new position. So um, 
I would like to, but um, uh, if I can, I will definitely. You know. I've never fished a Rappahannock, so it'd be it'd be awesome to do it, you know. But it's yeah, it's a diff- it's gonna be a different animal. Man. You know? We'll see. Because right now you got a first, a twelfth, and a twentieth, so you're you're not bad in, in the standings. Not bad. So that's right. gonna, oof, dude. That's gonna be interesting. But no, dude. Like, again, you know, congratulations for for your victory. This was really awesome. Is there anything that we can promote or give a shout out to on the channel? Um, well, definitely shout out to my family. You know, my wife Meredith and Wesley, my son. Um, it's so awesome because they, you know, they they help me. They embrace this. You know, new thing I'm getting into with you know kayak tournaments and stuff like that. It does take time, you know, and and tournaments being on Saturdays, you know, kind of takes away from you know, but. They love it, you know. They they support me, so I really appreciate that. And uh, MBKBA, um, for those who don't know the club, it's uh, it's definitely uh, a great place to. It's got something for everybody. It's got something for if you've been fishing your whole life and really good at kayak fishing to just got my kayak or just started fishing. I mean, the, the group is really supportive. Um, the trail series, you benefit, you benefit, benefit it from from. No matter what you're, you're into, you know, I mean, if you're there just to have fun to I want to win competitions, I mean, it's it's geared for everybody. So uh, Mike Ortega does a really good job um, mm-hmm. setting up the, the, the trails, the fish and the logistics behind it. I'm sure it, it's more crazy than we than we know of as anglers that fish it. But uh, definitely appreciate the, the support from the club to put on great tournaments for us to fish. I mean, it's, it's really rewarding in many ways. Yeah, huge shout out to Mike. I mean, being a tournament director is not fun. Uh, um, it, it's probably the worst part about fishing because you don't actually get to fish. You just get to deal with complaining and bureaucracy. So gr- again, so thank you so much for for putting on this great tournament trail. And again, guys, there you have it. Juan, uh, champion, stop number four, MVKBA, Battle of Five Lakes. Congratulations, sir. And then guys, if you could, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out in the algorithm to help uh, help us get more and more content out there. Uh, we are nationally ranked in Apple, po- Apple, Spotify, and iHeartRadio amongst outdoor fishing podcasts. We'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.